So today we're visiting with, with Greg and Carissa from Hawassa Hope, which actually is a local organization that's working in Ethiopia. So give us a little background on Hawassa Hope, what y'all do, and how you're making a difference uh, in Ethiopia. So we partner with an orphanage in Ethiopia called Ajuja, and we have a personal connection to that. Our, our son started out um, there. And when we heard the name of Juja, that got stuck in our hearts. God had planted a seed there for us, and, and then we went and visited and asked, how can we help? And it, it all started from there. And the initial goal was to support the 13 orphans that he would have um, been cribmate with. And then almost overnight, God delivered that. And, and we were encouraged um, to dream big, and, and we did. And, and God quickly made all those things happen. We've expanded now. We've got not just those 13 sponsored, most of them have moved on, been adopted or locally. Local adoption is a big program. And now the orphanage runs anywhere from 15 to 30 some kids at a time. It's fully staffed. They have all they need. We have 250 children and students in the communities that surround the Owasa area that are sponsored through the program. We have small business initiatives that you know, ladies, widows, mostly are um, able to start their own businesses and thrive and, and run their own um, families without any outside intervention after that initial training and, and infusion of cash. The fresh water projects, um, we try to just tackle the whole thing um, just to get people independent and enable Juju's staff to be more efficient at what they do. So our clean water projects are a little bit different than doing wells. We, um, the staff there, we work with the local water authority in Ethiopia and with their government, um, and they do testing on certain areas, and they go down and drill back to where there's a spring. So they go, a lot of piping go all the way back to a freshwater source and where there's a spring, and then they'll, um, you know, dig it out, pipe it out, and then they'll have, you know, the um, pipes and everything where people can get it. and. Recently, they just started adding, which is really neat, laundry basins for the women to do their laundry so they're not having to get down in the mud and the rocks and do their laundry, which has been, they've been really excited about that. Um, a couple years ago, I was able to do a interview with a village leader where we had completed a water project. And it was um, it's just so much more far-reaching than I ever would have dreamed. So he, you know, he said, now our children are in school because they're not sick from the parasites in the water. Um, he told us that now there's peace in the community because when there was a drought and it was really dry and there was just a trickle of water, they were fighting over the water. So it's even bringing peace. They told us that the children aren't um, having, they're able to go to school too because they're not having to walk for hours and, you know, hours to go get whatever water that they need that day. So it's been, um, you know, I'm thinking, okay, we're providing clean water, which is a great thing. You know, it's a great thing. But I didn't realize that's going way beyond just making sure that they're that they're well, you know, that they're um, healthy. Yes. It's, it's going. And he, and he said they have more money because they're not having to take their children to the doctor to get medical visits and to get, you know, um, you know, medicine to get rid of the parasites and, and everything. So it's actually one of my favorite projects that we do because it's it can quickly be done. You know, once we have the funds, it happens. It's amazing how quick they they do it and then you see change in a whole community and they also one thing that I love about it is they involve the whole community mm -hmm. we went to one area where it was really far back and the men in that village they dug a road by hand so the equipment could get back there you know they're out there digging it by hand and I like that because they're putting ownership into that village you know this is yours you're gonna guard it you're gonna take care of it this is yours so what kind of investment are you, does it take to, to bring this about? It's different. It depends on the terrain, how much stone they have to go through, and how far out it is because then all the equipment and the piping has to travel even further. Usually a project like that is around $7,500, $8,000, something like that. This particular one is the stage two and three will end up being about $7,500 per stage. So it'll be about $15,000. But when you do the math, it's a couple dollars per people per person and then they have a sustainable fresh clean water source that'll keep them healthy and, and make the families um, give them what they need to thrive. So it sounds like a lot of money up front mm -hmm. but when I look at what we paid for my well right. uh, that was back in 88, 89 whenever I right. well my house 
uh, that was for one person, one family. Right. And this is for serving about nine thousand people. Wow. This is uh, yeah. This is crazy cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's scary how cheap it is. Yeah. And the neat thing is, is that you know a lot of people coming together, giving what they can, being generous with what they have, and it, it ends up being done pretty quick when right. you have a group of people that say, "I want to be a part of that." And um, yeah. So, you were mentioning uh, about visiting here recently, and you all both go once a year, and we're actually, our family's joining uh, Greg in July to visit Ethiopia again, so we'll be going back in July and seeing the work firsthand, uh, and we'll be updating you at that time what we're doing, but you go in the same general area visiting stuff that y'all have gotten started that you're working with, you're building relationships, I'm assuming? Yeah, we actually go about every three months, three or four months, we tag team. Okay. So he'll go and then I'll go and then he'll go until the kids get older and we can leave them longer <laughs> by themselves. Um, but yeah, we're going back to the same, you know, the same places. We work in 12 different, 12 or 13 now? That's 13. 13. Yeah. 13, they added a new area to us. Um, we work in 13 different areas outside of Owasso City, so think like counties. So we work in 13 different um, counties, and then, so we'll go and we'll visit our families, get updates, you know, we sit down with them, our sponsored families, and say, how are you doing? What's going on with your life? What grade is he in now? What do you want to be when you grow up? Which is, you know, so neat to hear a child, mm -hmm. I want to be a doctor, or I want to be a judge, or, you know, what's your dreams? And we'll ask the parents, you know, how can we, how can we pray for you? And that's always very telling because then we find out a little bit more about their life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then just ask them, you know, we've asked them, what are your dreams for your child? You know, and, and that's, you know, I want him to be a good man. I want him to serve God. I want him to do well. I want him to be prosperous. I want him to have peace, you know. Um, and, and to see that these moms and these dads or uncles or older brothers and sisters that are taking care of their children have the same hopes and dreams for their kids as we do for ours.